Welcome to Dick Morris Democracy. I'm Dick Morris. In Biden's Washington, no good deed goes unpunished. Amid school lockdowns during the COVID crisis and student test scores taking a beating as remote instruction proved to be useless, the administration has decided to take aim at the one institution that's actually working, charter schools. With three and a half million pupils, mainly from minority communities, charter schools have had a 7% increase in enrollment this year, while a million parents have removed their children from regular public schools. But now Education Secretary Miguel Cardona is proposing regulations designed to rein in charter schools and hobble their operation. Last week, charter school advocates from across the country mostly black and Hispanic school leaders, teachers, students, and parents, traveled to Washington to protest the new regs and tell Cardonia to back off. Cardonia is trying to limit the federal charter schools program, a $440 million effort to help charters get started, now absorbs less than 1% of federal aid to education. He wants to require new charter schools to prove that they need it, by showing that there's over-enrollment at nearby public schools, a requirement few can meet given the mass exodus of frustrated and angry parents from failing public schools. The fact that waiting lists to get into charter schools routinely top 100,000 kids in cities like Philadelphia doesn't seem to satisfy the Cardonia requirement. Despite the fact that charter schools are disproportionately black and Hispanic, New schools would still have to prove that they would not worsen integration in other public schools. And despite the demonstrated success of for-profit charter schools, Cardonia would cut off their aid. The success of charter schools is evident in the South Bronx area of New York City, one of the most depressed of the city's communities. Of the nearly 2,000 public school students who began high school in District 8 four years ago, only 2% have graduated and were ready for college. The other 98% failed to finish high school, a recipe for a lifetime of unemployment, or did graduate but were so deficient in basic skills that they had to take remedial courses in English and math in order to be ready to enter a community college. So does the South Bronx need charter schools? You bet they do. In the South Bronx School District, only 32% of the students pass the basic proficiency test for reading, and only 30% meet the standard for math. By contrast, among the same neighborhood's charter schools, 58% make the grade in reading and 62% in math. No wonder, then, that the parents in this predominantly black and Hispanic community, among the poorest in the nation, are desperate to get their kids into charter schools. 25,000 families are applying for 9,000 seats in Bronx charter schools. And absenteeism in the regular public schools is rife. In two of the nation's biggest school systems, New York and LA, 40% of the kids, four out of 10, are considered chronically absent. Why are charter schools better? Well, first, they're not hogtied by union agreements and bureaucratic rigs that stifle creativity and learning. So they can focus on individual tutoring and have teachers who spend more time in the classroom. With generally smaller class sizes and more of a focus on student achievement, their morale is higher, and a can-do spirit pervades their halls. By contrast, much of the public school system is focused on cannot do. In New York City, for example, where do you hear this? More than 600 teachers report every day to reassignment centers which are holding facilities for New York City Department of Education, would those accused of misconduct go and spend their entire day? They get full pay, but can have no contact with students. They do nothing, literally nothing, for hours and days and months on end, some for years. The teachers call them rubber rooms. Can they be discharged or fired? Hell no. The union fights every attempt to dismiss them so vigorously that the last time the city tried, it cost the taxpayers half a million dollars, and they still didn't get rid of the teacher. Board of Education stopped trying and lets them veg out in these rubber rooms. 
Yet the Democratic politicians who run New York City would rather send children to failing public schools than to find places for them in charters where real learning goes on. The fact is that neither the system nor the union care as much about education for the kids as they do about their own pay, perks, and privileges. They know they can take the votes of black parents for granted and focus their attention on courting the teachers' union, the leading source of money and votes. And the one thing unions dread more than anything is competition from charter schools. So Biden's education department is determined to hobble the charter schools, insists that they have to serve a diverse population, a requirement designed to disqualify schools that don't have enough whites that largely serve the city's inner city non-white student bodies. And despite long waiting lists for precious places in charter schools, they have to demonstrate there is an unmet need for them in regular public schools. National Review magazine complains Charters must supply plans for racially and socioeconomically diverse staff, effectively a mandate for a racial spoiled system, making a mockery of the efforts of charter schools to hire and retain good teachers, something the public schools don't do. One public school teacher in three quits after three years. And the charters are required to pair with local public schools. And to operate, they must get annual letters from each partnering public school, attesting to their commitment to collaboration. Basically, it requires them to get approval from their public school competitors in order to stay open. The regs that would cripple charter schools do not require congressional approval. Without specific legislation stopping them, they can put, be put into effect administratively. Fortunately, a group of House Republicans has set Cardonia a tough letter attacking the new regs. Let's hope that when the Republicans take over the House, real education can take place in our cities, as opposed to these ornamental monuments to failure we call public schools.